Again, just thank you, Pastor Polson, for that incredible story and just the God's grace. Um, and Pastor Clark for being here. And I think I was praying about what to say too, and just from the heart, you know, it's we're here for to save the babies and we're here for the to save the mothers from the heartbreak that will last for a lifetime. Um, you know, 35 years ago, I did make that decision, and there's not a day that goes by that I don't regret that decision. But in God's mercy, thank God in his mercy, I know there is forgiveness. And so, after years of running from something that I didn't even know that I was running from, because back then there were no sonograms, it was legal, um, I thought if it's legal, it must be okay. And so I think the whole fact of, you know, that we need to do legislatively and, you know, praying and all of it's working together, the education. But the fact that, you know, I made that choice 35 years ago and there were no sonograms. And again, after years of running, God brought me full circle in his gentleness and in his grace as only he can do to let me see the horror of what I had done without despairing because so often when one finally does come to realize the sin that they've committed you know without God's mercy and grace you just fall into a, a, a despair that sometimes leads to suicide especially with post-abortive people and that's one of the things that um, we've realized now over the years you know when plant or when uh, Roe v. Wade was passed, you know, 40 plus years ago, they thought that was going to be the end of it. Well, you know, here we are. Our country is more pro-life, thanks be to God, than we've ever been before because of sonograms, because of education, because of prayer, because of the government leaders that are st finally starting to take a, a stand. I cannot thank Terry, uh, Mayor uh, Terry Frank enough for being a witness and praying as a government leader, I mean, thank God we have got people like you that are standing up and saying, you know, this is who I am and not afraid and not politically correct. And so I think, you know, it's as I watch these women go in, I know the fear. I know they think that's going to be their answer. I know they think this is, you know, it's going to take care of it all and I'll walk out and nobody will know or maybe somebody might know, but it'll be done. And it just breaks my heart because they, they are now on a road where it is not the answer. It will only be a, a road of heartache and just um, one thought after another that can't be squelched, can't be put down except by Jesus Christ and his mercy and his love. And so it was through through God and through the sacrament of confession and being able to, you know, really come to repentance and then bringing me out in to be able to speak about it because for years I knew, I felt like I'd been forgiven, I knew I had been, but my family didn't know. My kids didn't know. And here, one pro-life thing after another kept being put in my path, and I'm like, oh my gosh, God, now what? You know, nobody knows, and I felt like such a hypocrite. And I said to him, I said, you know, God, if you want me to be more public about this, then you're going to have to let me know. And as God can only do, he let me know very clearly over the course of the next year to tell, you know, each one of my kids. And I'll never forget him. My oldest, who is now 34, he listened, and he said, Mom, said you felt bad about this long enough now go and help somebody else not to make that choice and it was like the hug from heaven i needed he gave me a gift that he had no idea and so then you know one thing after another but i again i think the um what i see in the pro-life community too is nothing but um compassion and forgiveness for those who have made that choice there has never been anybody that I've met that I've felt judged by, and that is a testimony to the pro-life community. That is saying, you know, that we, we're with you. 
you know, we hurt for you. It's not, and, and I think that's why the 40 Days for Life and other, you know, just, um, you know, the GAP project, there's, there's nothing but compassion for those who have made this horrible choice. And I think as our country, you know, continues to go down this road, it's not gonna get better until we stop killing our children and wounding our women. Our country will never be what it should be until we stop this. And so we keep doing what we're doing and we pray for those who have made that choice and, and know that, you know, there is mercy and forgiveness and, and, and repentance. I keep thinking about, you know, the verse, create in me a clean heart and wash me whiter than snow. And that is what God does when we come to him in full repentance. And so we'll just pray for those. Dear Father, we just thank you for the power of prayer and your promise that when two or more are gathered, you're with us. Thank you for your mercy, for your forgiveness, for your gentleness, for your grace. Thank you for leading us back to you. Thank you for just always pursuing us with your love. Thank you for just your forgiveness and that we know that there's nothing that can be done that when we come to you with a repentant heart that there's forgiveness and healing and then father like pastor clark said there's action and there's prayer and there's helping for others so that they don't make this horrible horrible wrong decision we ask for those who have been wounded by abortion that haven't found the healing, that they come to you, that you put people in their path that really bring them closer to you so that they can have that peace, the peace that only you can give, Lord. We love you and praise you, and thank you, Mother Mary, for your intercession as our perfect role model and one who said yes to your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And let us look to you as somebody to um, just to be able to say yes. We love you and praise you, Jesus Christ. Amen.